in this video I will show how to fix uh, non-working tuning knob from uh, old FM radio tuner and, and this device is uh, from the 70s and uh, I think 70s and older than that have uh, this kind of string uh, thing which is uh, basically connecting the knob and this uh, needle which is showing the frequency and the device which is physically uh, changing the frequency all these things are connected with uh, simple wire or string or cord many names but the main point is that over the time this string will go hard and it's not elastic anymore so this will cause problems with tuning knob uh, this is just spinning and doing nothing and the needle is not moving and this uh, frequency changer is not moving and in this case the wire is actually broken but it may have intact but it's so hard and stiff so nothing moves when you try to turn the knob and next time giving some tips and tricks how to reinstall new string in place I'm not sure uh, what position this frequency changer should be or where this needle should be when I start to install new string but I, I guess that when I move this all the way to the end this end is the uh, highest frequency because when needle is here from the uh, at the highest frequency the string in this side is short and when knob is turned the needle starts to move that way it will uh, increase the length of the string uh, or increase the distance between this and this and that means that because the string is always the same length it it have to turn the wheel when the needle is moving further away so I'm guessing that when needle is all the way to the highest frequency point this is the highest frequency point of this frequency changer and this position is where I'm going to start to rewire the string in many cases there is no uh, diagram or any um, service manual photos of this string and in this case also I tried to search from the internet but couldn't find any proper pictures how this string should go but it's quite easy to just figure out by looking where the pulleys are so basically <coughs> if we start from the knob it's turn it around the knob few rounds then it's mo it moves straight to the needle then there's two pulleys which are changing the direction here's another pulley here's another pulley and there's one and then we go to the frequency changer or whatever it's called and not sure how it should be here but uh, this turns about one and a half turns so I think it should be at least one full round around this so that when we are moving from one end to another the string uh, is not fully 
out from this wheel. So it should stay on this wheel from one end to another. Then same thing for this other end. So this wheel is basically the path where both ends of the string is coming from. And back to the knob, the other direction, there's a pulley there and there and there and we get to the here. So uh, next thing to do is removing the old string and putting new one in but in a way that both ends are quite long so that we can test how many rounds we need here and we need some extra string so that we can test how many rounds should be here because in some cases uh, one or two rounds is enough but some other models uh, require three to four rounds uh, just to make enough friction so that this knob will move the needle and move this wheel easily after some test fittings, I'm pretty sure easier is to start actually from the other side. So this longest um, route from the uh, wheel to the knob is uh, quite challenging to keep uh, to maintain the string aligned and on the pulleys because once you uh, release the string all these pulleys will go loose and the string will jump off so I have this uh, kind of uh, metal weight here uh, so I can keep the string tight and now it's uh, on the pulleys all the way and one thing I noticed that um, I have turned this wheel to the other end so it's now on the lowest frequency so needle should be here on the lowest side also when I'm continu continuing the string routing here uh, one thing I noticed that this turns one and a half turns so I need one and a half turns this string around the wheel before it goes in and it's uh, tightened it to the spring here uh, one and a half turns because I demonstrate I pull the string all the way here now the string is almost gone from the wheel and now it's on the other end, the highest frequency end. So now we turn the knob to go to all the way to the lowest frequency. Now one and a half turns and uh, this is the amount of string we need around the wheel for this side. Now everything is in place. The string is first tied to the spring here, then one and a half turns and then I uh, rotate the string first here, the long distance to the knob and then, then uh, uh, under these wires and here then one and a half turns actually uh, well almost two and then I slide the string from the hole and now just by pulling I can maintain uh, proper tension here so this is the basically same situation that I'm uh, tied this string to the spring so I'm just pulling it with my other hand uh, 
And now I can uh, test if this knob is working. So I will keep the tension. And as you, as you can see, the needle here is turning uh, and uh, I mean moving. And when I turn the knob, knob is turning, string is moving and this wheel is turning. And now there's one full round and then one and a half needle is now on the other other end the string is still in place in all pulleys I keep the tension here and to the other end while I'm moving this string by using the knob here uh, I also check that nothing is touching the string so all the cables uh, or some sharp metal edges uh, nothing is touching the string so I know the uh, root of the string is correct now then I continue to rotate the knob now this uh, frequency changer is on the other end needle is on the other end there is still proper tension everywhere so I know that now this string is how it should be now last thing to do is keeping the tension of the wire and making a knot here to the spring so this end is still in my hand and I'm holding it to maintain the tension so it's quite tricky to make a knot to the spring without losing the tension okay now there is knot at the spring so both ends of the string is now here and when I turn the knob needle is moving and the selector or frequency changer whatever is moving it's moving all the way to the end and back the knob is still feeling quite funny so I think the string should be slightly uh, tighter but with old stereos old radios well we can forgive that it not have to be perfect when it's uh, really old uh, the final thing now is uh, calibrating the needle position because now we don't know is the for example exactly 100 megahertz here is it exactly the same here so needle can be moved yet because it's not glued so next thing to do I will uh, search some radio channel with the frequency I know and the radio station I recognize and for example 104 is uh, one which is easy to recognize in my country so I will turn the thing on check for 104 put the needle there and then search the channel and listen recognize then I know the needle is in the right place and I will glue it in place so there you have it uh, this is how to change the tuner string for old radios <laughs>